Welcome to the Butterfly Effect Studio. I'm your host, Christian Rebenig. As you know, based on the chaos theory, small changes can have a big impact. The goal of the session is to uncover how leaders and change makers develop their purpose, competences, and community to learn how they achieved their great positive impact. Every of the episodes is packed full of ideas you can apply to your own life. In this conversation, I speak to Niklas Hildebrand, strategy and project developer at Tesla, entrepreneur, venture architect, and global shaper at the World Economic Forum, and also mentor at Tomorrow University. Great to have you in the studio. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> Niklas, um, share, share me a little bit. What has motivated, what has driven you in your life, actually, to take on all these challenges? Mm -hmm. Good question, actually, because I feel, just to start somewhere at least, I feel if you have access to education, you kind of have the responsibility to give something back because ha having education is such a gift so that I was like, mm -hmm. when I started my bachelor, I was like, Jesus, I have such a chance here to, to make change in the world. I should give something back. And that's what always motivated me. So whenever I started a new challenge in life, if it was, I don't know, doing a startup, joining Tesla, whatever, I always ask myself, does this thing has impact on a greater scale? Does it have positive externalities for everybody? And that's something that keeps me motivated throughout the day because we all know that we have these big tasks, but then we have to put in the hustle, put in the work. Um, and this helps me on this day-to-day -day basis to say like, look, in the end, I'm doing something which has like positive externalities for everybody. I don't know if it's climate change or social injustice, I don't know, but like everybody has to find this for themselves. And that's mm. in my case, keeps me motivated like hell. <laughs> Amazing. So tell us a little bit, what are, what are the achievements which you are most proud of actually? Um, good question as well. Right now, I mean, that's probably due to my current role at Tesla. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm actually contributing something towards climate change and that's mm -hmm. establishing charging infrastructure in the European market. And to give you something like some background, why I'm proud of that is that if you think about that on a larger scale, you have like climate change, right? And one yeah. of one aspect of climate change is actually energy transition, which is a huge point in all of our lives in politics and stuff. And energy transition, however, is like accelerated by EVs, like electric vehicles instead of combustion engine cars. And if you break that down further, like this EV uh, growth is just dependent on enough and sufficient charging infrastructure. And that's why I'm super proud because like if you scale that everything down right yeah. now, like the bottom, yeah. I'm helping to accelerate this EV growth, help accelerating this energy transition. And in the end, I'm like a, a, a super, super, super small factor in terms of the helping to, to, to ch help the climate crisis. And that is something right now I'm really proud of. Uh, and that's, uh, it's important and exciting, I think, as well. Um, so w how do you, uh, you mentioned where you started, you did a, your bachelor, but what have been the, the skills, the competences on your path, which actually helped you to get there? Yeah. In, in my, in my case, actually the bachelor's was just like for, for, for the basics. And then I, I kind of specialized in my master's in London and that mm -hmm. helped really get this this tool set, skill sets that I needed right now. And this is basically design thinking and how to quickly iterate ideas because most of us, or we all know it, we all have like millions of ideas on a daily basis in the job, whatever. And this design thinking skill set helps me to, to kind of iterate really quick if this is something actually feasible that actually can help and is actually needed. Um, so I can quickly check the boxes if is this feasible is this desirable and if if it is viable actually and yeah. if i check these boxes i know okay this is a good thing i should work on this and and if you think about that you can actually break that down again to a super small uh to a super small scale because if you think should i do this project i don't know within charging infrastructure you'd be like is this desirable right now is this feasible and is this viable and if it checks all boxes i'm like okay i'm all in <laughs> amazing amazing uh, and it makes sense because th th in that way, you make sure you're working on the right thing. Yeah, exactly. it's actually less important if you're super efficient, but if you work on the right thing, that's what advances actually. Yeah. Exactly. Um, do you apply this also in your personal life? 
Uh, <laughs> to be honest, to give you a real honest answer here, I, I don't try to do this in my in my personal life because yeah. there's more room for like emotions and stuff. <laughs> so maybe that's that a totally. uh, one one checkbox. <laughs> no, no, totally, totally. Um, what are other competences, um, skills which have helped you? I mean, design thing for sure is, is one thing, but I, I guess also like communication was a, it's most likely in your role, really key to be successful. Yeah. Or you, you said it yourself basically, because especially if you, if you study something more into the direction of business administration, you, you necessarily need to acquire additional skills. And this is, for example, communication, because if you think about it, communication helps you to get insights into topics you have no clue of. Because all of us are starting a bachelor's or whatever, and we don't have any idea about climate change. I don't know if you want to go into solar panels, you have no idea how these things work or into charging infrastructure or anything. So you need a good communication to meet the right people who actually know or have the right insights on that. So you can learn on a daily basis. So in my case, communication is one big skill that, that, that that's helping me like every day. Um, I'm, I'm really curious, uh, because of the different roles you have had in your, uh, past already. Um, and you mentioned already your motivation, uh, your, your motivation to, to give back and, um, based on your education and your learning, um, and the vision of impact, but, um, yeah, what has desired, how did you find actually your next step? Um, maybe also why do you, for example, go to this extra mile and here become a global shaper, um, for what is driving you there? That is, that is actually a really, really good question because I feel that just happens in the moment. But of course I have somehow a framework because of course in life, if you're, if you're a good communicator, you're seeking out opportunities and stuff, mm -hmm. there will be more opportunities because there's kind of a multiplier because people then connect you with other people. So other opportunities arise. But when it comes to those opportunities, I feel I still like, assess them on the base of where I can have the, the biggest impact with my existing skill set. To give you an example, for example, I actually had the chance of joining the Global Shapers and do another initiative. I, I don't name the initiative, but I had the feeling that in within the Global Shapers, I have way more to give because due to my acquired skill set in, uh, as a venture architect and in Tesla, I'm, I'm super able to structure things down real quick. And for the mm -hmm. shapers, that helped a lot to actually structure down those projects, then filter who's most capable to do what, kind of orchestrate that, and then have a bigger impact within the organization. And that that's something that helps me assess what are my next steps, because the more career steps you actually gain in your in your career, the the, the, the more you actually define your own skill set and you know in which things you're good and also in which things you're, you're not that good and where you need mm -hmm. help. So I'm basically able to access like, okay, the, those people have those and those skill sets. They don't need me, or maybe I can, I can have some impact and I can actually help them. And for the shapers, as I said, uh, this was the case because I felt I, I, I could actually give them more structure, kind of orchestrate the projects a bit more uh, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, and actually that's why I said like, okay, I can have a lot of impact there and I can, I can bring in my own skill set and that was a huge uh, reason. Really interesting. Cool. Thank you. So, so you're saying on the one hand side, it's really interesting because you're saying that communication for you is not about actually communicating yourself, but actually about listening. Um, exactly. Which exactly. I think is a very, very important already. Uh, seeking to be under, to understand actually is the first thing. And then that, but by that learning how, where you can help the most is the second thing. So you're looking to find like, like completing something actually. A more yeah, like this perspective. Yeah, exactly. And let me jump in there because like, I feel a lot of people always say like communication is just like, I don't know, networking, go to a conference yeah. and stuff like that. I, I slightly disagree actually with that because mm -hmm. I feel communicating is about like seeing that other person and, and, and actually listening and seeing their needs and see if I can do something to help them actually, because everybody is in constant need all the time and also can give something all the time. And it's just about us to actually f see those connections and then connecting people. And it's not about, I don't know, attending million conferences and, and, and just talk about yourself. It's more about actually finding out about the, the, the interests of the other person, stuff like that. Uh, 
Um, but you're yeah. combining this with serendipity because we've described before you, by communicating, you're introduced to other people. And then eventually something which you may have not anticipated is actually happening or an opportunity is created. Um, exactly. and this, yeah. Sorry. And let me jump in there one more time because this is also the reason how we can have more impact in the world, I feel. Because mm -hmm. as I said, if you study just business administration, your horizon is just like limited. But if you're able to communicate with people, you actually see, oh, there's so much more out in this world and there are like so many skill sets. I don't know, chemists or physicians or I don't know, climate people who have like climate study, climate tech or whatever. All those people have so much more experience in their fields. And sometimes somebody with like a little bit of structure can help them, like give them a structure, give them the right mindset and put in the day-to-day -day work. And that is how opportunities are created again in the end and how we can create more impact, I feel. But there are also many challenges on this path. Yeah. Um, maybe it's things you haven't solved before. How do you, what's your aspiration? How do you actually overcome those challenges or did overcome those challenges in your life? That, that is also a good question because I feel we all know that, right? So we have a challenge. We don't understand it yet. Um, yeah. For me, there are actually two things that help me a lot. First thing is <laughs> go out for a run and actually think through that problem for like 30, 40 minutes and just like circle around, circle around. And even if you feel dumb circling around, at least at some point you're digging deeper and one level deeper and one level deeper. So there are always more dimensions towards a problem. And in my opinion, this is the first step to actually solving something because even if you haven't got a clue at all after such a run, you have like more dimensions to the problem. And then coming back to the communication, if you see like, for example, in the deepest dimension, I can't solve that, but somebody else, I can just ask them and say, look, this is how I structure down the problem. Can you help me with the lowest dimension? Because I'm an idiot on that field. And then that person can help me. And then from there, it's like super easy to scale back up and actually solve the problem. So for me, in the end, it's about, as I said, structuring it down and then seek for help because none of us can solve all their problems alone, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, if you work out of problems, I guess all the Things will work out, but some things are challenging and will not work out, and there are successes and failures. Um, how do you deal with, with failures? How do you deal with things which don't work out? Yeah, I mean, when I when I was younger, so in my bachelor's, I felt like that, that shouldn't be a thing. So if something fails, I did something wrong. Like right now, mm -hmm. like after five or six years in my career, that changed completely. I feel I feel failure is something that is that is just like no, not obsolete, but it's like something in life. So it's sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that you have to learn about the failure because there's always a reason why something failed. And for this reason, there's always something you can learn about. And this mm -hmm. slightly changed my mind. So whenever something fails, I'm not like, oh, I did it wrong. I'm so dumb. I'm more like, oh, maybe there's a, maybe there's something in it that I can learn. So I don't do this mistake one more time again. So I actually learn and improve more. And this is, right for every aspect in life <laughs> amazing so this kind of curiosity um constantly yeah. yeah what is in it for me actually you're always looking actually for the win even the failure because that's something what you can learn in there um but how did you build up for example that competence that is that is super interesting that is actually super interesting and i i, I actually recently talked with a friend about that and for me it wasn't business related at all i was mm -hmm. playing soccer in my youth a lot. So a mm -hmm. lot of team sports and there we actually had like, I don't know, a once in a lifetime team where you could be able to talk about those failures. And yeah. then I transformed that into my, I, I'm running a lot of marathons and I actually transformed this process of failure into my, into my marathon work because there you most of the time don't hit your personal record. You have issues with your body or whatever. And there I, I learned to actually think about that as if I have problems with my knee, it's not about because my knee is weak, but because I'm missing, for example, a muscle strength that I need to train. And there I started to recognize and every failure is something you can learn about that and improve. And if you transfer that into running, for example, that's exactly the mindset. If your knee hurts, it's not because your knee is weak. It's because there's like a missing muscle who doesn't support that knee. So it's your job to find out which muscle it is and actually train it and support it. And that's, 
what I transferred in the end into business. It's kind of cliche um, <laughs> and a little bit cringe, but it's actually true uh, and an honest mm -hmm. answer. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think this is how we learn of not in school, just per, per definition, but actually with the real problems we have, yeah, with the real challenges out there. Exactly. Um, you mentioned the big part of your career was always like communication, learning with others, asking for help on all those things. Um, maybe maybe who has, who has inspired you? Who's your role model, actually? Who are you looking up to? <laughs> that is also a cliche question, but I, I actually don't have a role model because I feel it's sometimes a little bit difficult if you just have one role model that you'd be like, mm -hmm. okay, I have to do everything like that person. Personally, I just, I just admire some like people who have the right mindset and who have the right values. And if I see that in business, they are kind of my role model. And I think like, oh, I should act like those people. And it doesn't mean that it's like the, CEO of, of some big company that could only also be like an, I don't know, somebody doing their internship and who has the right value at the right time and does the right thing. Then I'm like, man, this, this girl or, or boy is just like, this is a role model actually. And I should act similar to that person. So I'm like more going through everyday life and seeing people and be like, wow, these are like, these are role models actually. So what, what is the mindset or the values which inspired you? That is, that is also a good question. I feel in the end, it comes down to, to being an honest person. Mm -hmm. also in yeah. context, there's also sometimes mean to, to, to say your, your honest opinion on something. Like, for example, coming back to failure and stuff. If you see there's like something missing or it's not the best quality, be, be honest at least and, and tell it and then be outspoken about it. It's just about the way you communicate it, but at least you're honest and that helps. So like, I think honesty is, is such a, such a good value. And then the other thing is, is just trying at least to be good and do good things in the world. I know this sounds also kind of cringe, but in the end, it comes down to this, try to be a good person and you can transfer that to every aspect in your life in the end. And, and if I see those two aspects in, in people, I'm always aspired and try to to replicate that on my, on my own behavior. So if, if you're looking for people you want to work together with, um, you will look at authenticity. You will look at, um, if they're, if they are aspiring. So uh, you look into their effort actually to achieve whatever it takes to that, to that goal. If they have this on a uh, correctly understood, yeah. Exactly. And that's for you the main two dimensions. If you say, Hey, this is a person I would like to like to work together with, I think as well. Exactly, exactly. Because you can't look into a skill set or something because that's something you could always learn in a very short time. But like those, those big values of like honesty, transparency, trying to do the good things is just like, you can't learn that. And, and you don't want to work with people who are always trying to do something not good or tr trying to do something on their own advantage without looking for other people or whatever. Like that's, that's the per uh, probably a person that you don't want to spend 24 seven uh, in the work environment with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hard, but like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking, thinking just about that 24 seven in the work environment, but it's, <laughs> it's got a lot. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, how, I mean, in, I mean, how do you know that it's also not easy to find out if somebody is really authentic or, or honest or like trying uh, his best? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's also true. Um, but I, I feel like, or at least I have the feeling if you talk to somebody more than like 30 or 40 minutes, you kind of yeah. get a first glimpse on how they're thinking. And, and of course you can try to ask questions related to some situations and stuff to try to access. But in the end, you kind of get a glimpse throughout a whole conversation, like how people think and and then what their values are, I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you think back now to your before your bachelor, what would you <laughs> recommend your own self back today? What would you say, hey, you would have wished you would have known earlier? Um, I, one thing actually, and, and you said it yourself, is that this this learning effect, this confidence in your skill set, in, in failure and learning through all of this, because when you're younger and especially, and for, this is also true for me, you're super unsecure. 
You don't know mm -hmm. where you should go. You don't know what is your, the environment you want to work in, what is the actual content you want to work in and all those kind of things. And I think one, one recommendation is always be confident in yourself and just try to be, just try to be happy. And, and if happy means having an impact in the world then everything else will come and just like this certainty, um, that, that things will follow if you're just a, just a good person who's has the right intentions in life, I feel. Um, yeah. But then we have all the struggles in the reality. <laughs> so, so how do you get that kind of confidence, um, in yourself? How do you build that up? I think it's a matter of time, to be honest. It, it's just okay. as, because I feel if you start your first project and fail, of course, there's like a, there's like you, your confidence level probably won't increase, but over time, if you're trying things, seeking opportunities and stuff, at, at some point, something will work out just fine. And then from there, something else will just work out fine. And then out of a sudden, after three or four years, you call that your career, just like seeking opportunities and without recognizing, actually, you see what you've already achieved. And through that achievement, there builds the, this confidence, I feel. Um, so you actually can't teach that. And you can't say to yourself with 18, oh, I'm the most confident person right now. But just after seeking opportunities and trying to do good, I feel you can just like relax and just like, I don't know, look back and then you will see that you're confident. Um, so it's nothing like something that you can seek. It's just like something that happens automatically, I feel. Yeah. Um, uh, in combination, I think what you're saying is with the authenticity, like being who you are and accepting who you are with the failures you make, it's everything actually okay. Um, okay. And you just need to acknowledge that because, um, and not so much, I think, listening to judgments from others, uh, but literally uh, just, I loved how you phrased it, which is accepting more this learning approach of curiosity. Hey, um, it's it's not a, a failure or, or a win. It's just what can, what, what is, how, it's always a win. I can always grow based on that, but it's always okay, whatever it is. Yeah. Even if I cannot run my, marathon yeah uh, exactly. from this perspective yeah and then with that you build up um, more competences um and then yeah um i think also that the, the communication part is really important i think this learning to working together to have an impact um as uh, as something yeah um so what how do you decide maybe after the master program um you you also found your own company what was the motivation to found to found your own company that is, that is a good question because I feel, and I think this is most, or like most of this is actually true for, for a lot of founders is actually that you're seeing something in real life and you just be like, yeah. wow, why, why is there no solution towards this? Yeah. And, and then you think like, ah, okay, maybe I'm the person who should actually create that solution right now. And then out of a sudden, you're just like talking to people, being in yeah. your, in your bedroom and just like trying to, trying to, to build that. And out of a sudden you're like, Oh, am I founding this right now? And then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like for, for me, the starting point was actually seeing some some issues and and trying to solve them, and then just be like, okay, if no one else does it, then then I should do it. And in this comes also again this motivation of like, oh, actually, this creates impact right now. And then coming back to what I said earlier in in this framework, it's like, okay, it actually creates impact. It's it seems feasible, it seems viable, it seems desirable. Let's do it. Um, Amazing. That's um, smart. <laughs> I think this is the, one of the best ideal ways to found a company is by actually identifying a problem and then saying, hey, this is actually, this needs to be solved and then solving it. Um, and I think not, not every every founding story is like that. Um, <laughs> uh, Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so through these things, um, I think it's so important to have, have people who support you, who, 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 who supported you, um, actually in your career. Um, and in how did they support you? What was the most meaningful way of support you have received, actually? Um, I'd say two ways, actually, or like, like two aspects. One was I had a very early on, um, a mentor who was mm -hmm. my, my, actually my first boss. He was like super high level, C level position and stuff. And I had a personal connection with him and I felt that his recommendations kind of projected 
my way. So I, so I always felt understood when, when he talked to me. And when I said, like, look, these are my issues right now. How should I decide and stuff? I always felt like he had done this decision 20 years ago. Um, so that helped me actually a lot having early on the mentor who was like very C level, high level and had basically seen everything in the world. <laughs> so that helped a lot. And on the other side, um, it always comes again to, to, to persons and that were my friends. And I was super lucky that, that my bachelor friends and master's friend turned, turned out actually to be long time life or lifelong friends, um, who I can like share anything with. And I think this is also super important because whether it's about the business context or private context, you need people who you can talk to about everything. And, um, these two aspects actually helped me a lot er early on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this the trust relationship, um, that's amazing, but uh, great that you found a mentor. I think this is what we're trying. And it's why you feel lucky that you are supporting as a mentor at tomorrow university, because exactly this experience is really valuable. Um, yeah. To see where, what you can learn and derive from this, and uh, actually, yeah. Um, so, Nick, as you're coming to an end, um, just looking at the time, uh, is there anything else which comes to your mind which you want to share with our students, our learners? Any advice you would give them? Actually, one thing, because when I had this interview in, uh, invitation, I I immediately had this thought in mind, and I and I hoped I could say it because, as I said, I just did a, a super normal bachelor's in business administration. Mm -hmm. And at that time, actually, and that's not a joke, I was looking for programs who kind of integrate more this, this climate things into those basic skill set of business administration. And when I studied my bachelor's, I always felt like I don't need 50% of that. I'd rather need more insights into tech, into climate tech, into how I can have impact. Like those things that matter if you try to build your own company, join a meaningful startup or all those kind of things. And, and I feel, or like from, from my perspective, at least that tomorrow is, is, is trying to, trying to, to give that to students. And I feel that's super, super valuable because in, 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 in on my time, at least I had to read like millions of papers, talk to millions of people to get those insights. And I feel you get them a lot easier uh, at tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Saves you some time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I unfortunately I agree. I had also started the business administration and I would have totally wished actually uh, to have an interdisciplinary program where I learn about sustainability, but also and technology, um, because I think technology is just a great enabler to just become a better leader eventually as well and be more effective, you know, exactly. Um, exactly. in today's world. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much, Niklas, for joining. Uh, thank you very much for um, your authenticity here and answering all the questions, actually, and sharing that with all of us. Thanks for having me, Christian.